Here we go, and it's time for something a little bit different. So this is a little chat about some of the pace lining and some of the work that we've been doing after the, the sprint zones. And this is pretty good. This is what we used to do in the old days. We'd get organized, and then after the sprint zones, we would practice doing the pace line thing, because there's a lot of groups, a lot of people that don't really understand how to do this. I've got telemetry up there. I'm not going to really talk about it that much at this point, but you can see that the speed is it's around 21. And as I come to the front, I don't really change it. It's 21, 20, and then I come to going to the receiving line. Slight little bit of acceleration you can see, and notice there's a gap between like John in the blue and Ben back there, and that's fine. A lot of people think you need to close this thing really quickly, but like Ben does an excellent job of closing this gap slowly and it's keeping everything smooth I'm not quite certain how that gap developed but it really didn't matter and looking at the other spacing here you know half a wheel a wheel distance between you and the, the rider in front or more that's just fine because there is plenty of draft some people like to look like they're pro and they ride like 2.3 nanometers from the wheel and they're overlapping or whatever but when you're doing this kind of exercise, you don't need to be that close. And if you actually look at the wattage that we're putting out here, you can see how good the draft is. We're doing like 21 miles an hour and not that much as far as wattage. And this is really smooth. Everyone is participating. And you can see it's very relaxed. This is the kind of thing, if you have a big group like this, you could roll along for a long time without a lot of people doing a lot of work. And notice how the receiving line is close. People aren't dropping back too fast. They're staying on the wheel in front, and life is good. You can see in front, we've got Scott there, kind of just like soft pedaling. Yeah, it's really easy. And some people get to the idea, they think, oh, this, this should be harder or whatever. But once the mechanics are done, then you can go faster. So there's a little bit of a gap between Wolfgang and, the, and the, the, the red there. And then John fills this in. I got mixed feelings about this because Danny was coming up. He kind of lets John, uh, Scott in, in, in the black here hang out to dry. So there's two things that Scott could do. He could stay where he is, and now there's a bike length in between. It's like, really, there's no need to fill in when people are coming forward because there's plenty of draft. I know riders like to do this. But in a big group like this, unless you need to stay to the front because there's going to be attacks, I, <coughs> I just don't see the purpose in it. Because it can cause like jankiness in the pace line. Because you saw Ben had that big gap in front of him earlier. He closed it nice and smoothly. There wasn't a problem. When you move over like that, it causes a big gap. You just moved over. You just basically boned the guy behind you. So anyway, it's just my opinion. You can do what you want. This is what I see. At this point, you know, it's a little bit discombobulated, but when you go through that chicane, you know, there's really no need to stay in a perfect pace line. It's dangerous at times because of the bumps or whatever. And it's time to relax. You know, that section at one point in the ancient days was kind of a semi sprint zone, but we deemed it too dangerous because of those corners. There's some people that are really good at cornering. But people started taking risks. There were cars coming up. They were apex in that corner, crossing the yellow line. It was just getting ugly, so we just designated that to be a zone for practice. Here's a good shot of the people here. And life is good. And now we're coming into the sprint zone. <coughs> it's not really a sprint zone. People treat it, treat it as a sprint zone. So I'm going to talk about it as if it was a sprint zone. Make the corner here, and as the rules of engagement state, you can't do anything until everyone's around the corner. But no one's going to attack here because it's kind of a tempo zone. And before the bridge, we try to keep things somewhat tame. So looking at our power here, and I've got Scott's power, my power, Ben's power. You can look at it, but you can see and our heart rates. And the one thing of note here is Ben's heart rate is really low. I gotta ask him if that heart rate monitor is even working because he must have like the biggest heart. I mean, that is the big motor. 
I'll be working hard, like next to him. My heart rate's up to 160, and his will be like in the 110s. I'm like, what is up with that? But I digress. So here we are starting to get organized. The water's starting to creep up a little bit. People are starting to do the, the pace line thing, single pace line, and I'm closing this gap slowly. I'm next to Ben now, and we're just hanging out, chatting about whatever. You know, it's just like, <coughs> just enjoying the, the camaraderie here. And maybe I shouldn't be hanging out in the line. I didn't know who was behind me if we were doing double pace line or single pace line. Normally, people start to double things up, but, you know, it's not too much out here. My 30-second power, like 220. I'm uh, just power, like, like 300. So I am on the windy side, and it is a, not a lot of work, but you can look at the difference between my heart rate and Ben's. <coughs> it's crazy. Ben's at 119. I'm at 160. Like, that's amazing. You can see why he's the badass that he is. A little bit of rotating up front. And it's pretty pedestrian. 24 miles an hour. Nothing crazy. And you can see Scott up there, like, not even pedaling. You can see his power way down. Average wattage. And so he's sitting in. His average wattage is like 139. I'm out in the wind. I'm like 198. You see a big difference here. Doubling up behind, you see strong men, and everyone is pretty much relaxed. There's no pressure here, and there's a little bit of a pace line, and it looks like people are going off the front. So it looks like you got Daniel going off the front, Ilka follows, and I'm not certain why John didn't go with them. The acceleration couldn't have been that great. We're only doing like 25 miles an hour, and he could have gotten off the front and let somebody come through. I'm not certain maybe the person behind didn't want to come through and he just stayed up there. I know the bridge is coming and so it might not be that safe, but we are just letting those two basically walk off the front here. And that's okay, but I'm a little confused as to why that actually happened because we're not really working that hard. And sometimes I like to work hard. I mean a little bit hard. You know, it is the tempo zone. And this, in my opinion, was like sub-tempo. You can see kind of Joel there in the camo kit. It's like pedal, pedal, a little bit of coasting in here. But you can see that anybody who's on the right-hand side is not really working that hard. <coughs> and the carrot is dangling out in front of us. You got Daniel and Ilka up front, and there's no sense of urgency. Um, we got uh, one of the TTH guys, I think that's Scott. A little wave there, a little acknowledgement, fellow cyclist. And here we go, and here's the attack. Mr. Lawyer goes, and he goes pretty hard, and Ben is on his wheel, and then there's Steve. And now there's a bunch of them. There goes Anna. And I'm content because I'm not going to sprint here. It's not a sprint zone for me, but I want to keep some reasonable contact. You can see my wattage here creeping up over 400 just to kill with that little acceleration. And people are now a ramming and a thumping and are seriously in chase. They want to bring back those recalcitrants. I am certain they're going to bring them back because we are throwing down. And this is the sprint portion, but it's high tempo. Not a real sprint, and there's Anna, and I think she made a, a statement like, hey, misjudge that one. I should talk about the visor that she had there. Not the most aerodynamic thing, but if you're sitting in, it doesn't matter. Looks like we brought back Ilka here at nice HP kit. Haven't seen that one in a while. And I am just kind of dangling here, going to reel these people back in slowly. There's no sense of urgency here. For me, the queen stage is the prospect sprint zone. This one is just, that's nice tempo. There you got Joel coming through in the camo, and, and it looks like Curtis there. Because, I mean, they were sitting in, they got plenty of energy to go by here. Me going by the first city guy, looks like there was Greg. And I'm just kind of bringing people back. Average power, it looks like, you know, close to 200 as I begin to shut it down near the end of this street. And that was pretty good. You know, tempo was good. Wouldn't have minded to have it a little bit faster, but, you know, that little bit of surge at the end, that's okay. There's one of the instigators here. Nice job. I don't know if he brought folks back, but that was John. Oh, nice Porsche here. Very nice. Someday I need to get one of those when I go through my midlife crisis. Well, I guess half my life is over already, so maybe that ship has sailed. Here we're coming to this intersection. I like taking the bike lane here. Some people like the road. I'm like, there's cars. I mean... I don't see any reason to be going out on the road at this point. Like, I'll take the road less traveled, reduces conflict. I mean, you can do it if you want to go out there. I just don't think the risk is potentially worth it. 
And with that being said, that's all I have to say. And a good time was had by all.